This lesson for the Windows Passive Crossover Designer is to show what options are available in the graphs that are used throughout the program. When you first load a session file, previous session file, or you load some raw files and then do some, some work with them and have a design, a crossover as you can see here, you'll start out with the two curves that you see displayed. The, the graphs across the application are pretty much the same. Uh, most of the options are the same. Some things are different depending on which particular graph you're looking at. Overall, the functioning is the same. When you start out, what you're going to see is, as you see here, two curves on each graph. In this case, we're looking at the tweeter. It's what we're going to be representative of the graphs in the, uh, in the application. The blue curve is the raw data curve. The red curve is the EQ curve. What we have here is the raw tweeter in blue. On the left, the SPL. On the right is the impedance. If you take a look around the, the periphery of each of the graphs, you'll see that you have a number of options. Starting with the graph on the left, at the top you have plus minus on the left. You have sum, raw SPL, legend on off. Down bottom left, you have filter, target to the right, raw phase, and EQ phase. On the impedance curve, you have similar uh, uh, buttons. You have the raw impedance, which is listed raw Z. To the right, legend on off. Down to the bottom left, you have comp, which is compensated impedance. HP, which is high pass for this particular case for the tweeter. To the right is raw phase and EQ phase again. Going back to the graph on the left, what you can do with these particular buttons is generally to turn on and off some particular function. If we look at the left, we have raw SPL at the top. If I click on the raw SPL, what it does is turn off the SPL for the raw impedance curve. To the right of that, we have legend on off. One thing you notice with the when you turn on a curve or off turn off a curve, it also changes the legend. If we turn the legend off, it gives us just a little bit more space to view the graph. Uh, not a lot, but it's a little bit that could be useful. Over to the left, we have sum. We click on that, what you see is the summed response. This is useful to have on the graphs because you can do the design from within a particular graph without having to resort to having a separate window for the system curve. When that's displayed, if you move over to the plus and minus push button, that inverts uh, the tweeter connection. If we click it once. You know, when we start off, you'll see the, the connection says normal. Click it once. It says it's inverted. Notice two changes occurred down on the graph. One, the summed response changed due to the inverted tweeter. And then we had some extra data up here. The scale went from 100 to 20,000 down to 10 to 20,000. This is because the curves automatically extend the scale depending on the data that's displayed within the scale, within the curve. So, so now what we have is for this curve is data below 100, so it extended automatically. Putting that back normal, then we can turn it off. Move to the next one, we'll turn off the raw SPL. Down at the bottom left, we have filter tar and target on the left. If we click on the filter, what this shows is the actual filter response of the electrical filter, the high pass in this case, which is all defined by these elements over here on the left. The next one is target. Click that, we have the acoustic target in this case, a high pass function. To get that, you, what you do is you either import a high pass target, click on it, brings up a standard dialog for uh, opening a file, or you can select the desired high pass from a pull down list. In this case, we started off with a fourth order link with Riley, but you can see we have a number of options here. You can either click on it directly, or if you want to scroll through, 
click on the, the the selection box and then you can use the mouse wheel and scroll through the various uh, high pass targets that are available. So we'll go back to the link with Riley, fourth order. Coming back to the curve or to the graph curves, what you can see is that we're pretty close there. If you want to see what the actual data is, there's a nice option built into the context menu. Right click on the, any of the graphs, brings up a context menu, which has a number of options that it uh, has available. One of the interesting ones down in the middle, we start off with show point values. What that does is shows the actual data for the particular point closest to the cursor for the curve closest to the cursor. That's where a, there's a problem with that. You can see the sudden change between these two. It's very difficult to be sure that you're looking at the one you think you're looking at. So it's nice just to turn off, in this case, the uh, target so that now you have a single curve. And when you move the cursor along, you know that you're looking at that particular curve. Right click again, turn it back off. On the bottom right, we have raw phase and EQ phase. It's simply the phase data for the raw data. If we click the raw phase, that goes along with the raw SPL, similar colors, lighter color for the phase. And then the EQ phase. And the EQ phase is the response of the, uh, the phase after application of the crossover. Over to the right, we have some, a slider, which lets you take a look at, uh, at a different data range. Notice that the phase doesn't change since it's always 180 to minus 180 and wraps around. So we don't actually need to, to slide that. We don't zoom that particular one in. On the bottom, we have a slider for frequency. Inside, we have a a rather useful option if we click on some just to show in additional information. If you click and drag, you can highlight a particular section that will zoom to that section automatically. So you click and drag. When you release the mouse, it zooms in. You can do that multiple times, any number of times you want, any level of detail that you want. To go back out, you right click. Notice down in the middle, we now have unzoom and unzoom, undo all zoom pan. Those were grayed out before we zoomed in since they, they had no, no functioning at the time. We can do undo zoom and we do one level of undo. If you undo all zoom pan, it goes back to the beginning. On the right click context, there are also two additional uh, two additional options at the bottom. One is a save high pass acoustic response. Another is save high pass filter response. You do the save, it simply pulls up a save dialog. You save it by default as an FRD file. Other right click options in the context, we have copy so that you can copy this particular graph and paste it to a program uh, for manipulation later if you want or printing out however you, whatever you want to do with it. Save image as pulls up a save dialog as well for the various file types. Page setup is for printing. We have the actual print option to print the, the particular graph. And that about does it for the uh, for the graph lesson.